Imagine if you had a Photoshop clone that wasn't Photoshop, but also worked in your browser. This is what PhotoP is. It's a Photoshop clone that works in your browser, whether you're using Chrome, Safari, or Internet Explorer, and has a lot of features Photoshop does, and it's really fascinating. So let's just jump in and take a look at what it has, what it doesn't has, and if it's a viable option and alternative to Photoshop itself. The first thing that I want to mention is PhotoP is something that Ivan Kutsker, who is a 28-year-old programmer, made in Czech Republic. He spent 7,000 hours approximately developing the app, which comes out to about five hours a day for almost four years. But it's incredible because clearly 1.5 million people already use the app. To access the app itself, you can go to photop.com and you can see it looks pretty close to Photoshop. It looks like a weird Wario version of Photoshop. If you ever have seen Mario and Wario. Um, and I think the similarities pretty much end there because I think after this, seeing the layout itself reminds you of Photoshop. And let's take a look at what it has, what it doesn't have. I think the first thing we'll go through is the adjustment layers here. As you can see, it has pretty much every adjustment layer adjustment layer that you're used to has curves. So I can play with the curves. I can go into my individual channels if I so choose to. And this specific image was shot by myself. So it's a pretty decent image to work on as an example, I think. But clearly, if you go in the RGB spectrum, you don't see those RGB lines after adjusting the red, green, and blue channels. And if I want to delete them, I just drag the points off. I haven't seen this mode before, sketch. Let's actually play with that because Photoshop doesn't have that. So it looks like, I don't know what's happening here, but it looks like it grows for a bit. I see. So it's trying to actually sketch out the line of the curve, but it's for me not doing a great job. Maybe it does a better job for you, but there it is. Anyway, you have the curves here. You have other adjustment layers that you're used to as invert, threshold, blah, 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 levels. And they all pretty much work like you think they would. Also, if you're familiar with any shortcut in Photoshop, it works here as well. So S is clone brush. Um, you have A as arrow tool, Q for quick mask, which I think is different here. Q seems to work for doing something else. I'm not too sure. Let's go and delete these adjustment layers. But anyways, you can also use Command plus to zoom in, Command minus to zoom out. Let me see what else I have here. Z is a zoom key. It also works kind of similarly. I can't see what zoom distance I'm in because normally up here I can see it's at 100% or 200%. Command um, Z option click zooms out, Z click zooms in or command plus minus. Let's see what else it has. Under file menu, we have new, open, open in place. I tried opening PSD files that were really large or TIFF files. It didn't seem to load for me very well, so it might load for you better than it did for me. Uh, it did seem to take a long time. You can save as a PSD. You can export as any other variable, but seemingly it works quite well for PSDs if you wanna save layers. You can export as a TIFF file if you want to, um, but it saves as a flattened TIFF file for the web. So it doesn't save layered TIFF files, so PSDs, but it does export in very other various functions and formats, which is nice. We have edit. It doesn't have keyboard shortcuts. You can't change those as preferences, which are quite minimal. You can't change performance options, things like that. But you can do many things. So if you want to dodge and burn, you can set a curve. Um, not the not the red channel, the RGB channel. I can set a curve. I can Command I. I can hide that. I can sample my regular brush tool has flow opacity. Let's see how the dodge and burn works. I haven't actually tested this out yet, so I'm gonna go back to my brush tool here and use my bracket keys for now, which doesn't seem to go above a certain amount on my cursor. It just changes to a square. So I don't know what that's about. 
maybe it's because you have to have um, a certain size it doesn't go over. The next thing I realized is the flow can go down to 0%. I'm used to flicking this all the way down to get to 1%, but I guess that's it goes all the way down to 0, so it does nothing. Okay, um, let's use a flow of like 2% or so. I wonder if my flow opacity, oh my gosh. So even the keyboard shortcuts for opacity work really well. So if I hold shift and two, um, oh, it doesn't do that. Okay, so if you hold shift in the number, usually flow changes, but in this instance, the only thing that changes is opacity, regardless of if you hold shift or not. Okay, so that's a little bit different. Let me put that back to 100%. Flow I'll keep at 2% and then I'll start brushing. I'll make sure that my, my color is set to white. If I hit D on the keyboard, it goes back to defaults. So if I hit X, it, wrote, it flips through the keys or the colors. That's pretty good. So I have white and it's actually really responsive. Granted, this is not a huge image, but it's actually quite responsive. It's actually dodging like, it's, like I thought it would, which is kind of nice. Um, this is also really good if you don't want to open up Photoshop and you want to make some quick changes. You see some things you want to quickly dodge, go in there and you can start dodging and burning. Here's my craptastic results. Super beautiful. Okay, good. Um, I'm not going to retouch my already retouched photo, but it's a nice idea to play around with. You can see your history. Here's the panels it has. is info. It has properties. Um, so I can drag, pro can I drag this out here? No, it's stuck. So you, you can't actually drag your properties out, I think. No, maybe you can, but I'm not having any luck. You have your brush panel. You have character for text, paragraph, and layer comps. So if you go under window, you can't see any other panels in case you need them. So those are the ones that are there. Under view, you have zoom in, zoom out, fit to pixel area. And then we have grids, which I don't use. And then we have rulers. We also have filters. Interesting. So if I command J, let's go to filter and liquify. Nice. It has all my liquify filters as well, which is cool. Do you see these outside areas here? This was actually the original crop, but I cropped it in to cut off these panels from the retouching toolkit. So it does show pretty much everything else if in case you're trying to crop it and you want to keep some of the remaining boundaries. Okay, so liquify works pretty good. You have your size, your density, and your rate. So it doesn't have a, you know, a ton of liquify settings, but the main things that I use liquify for, it does have and works really fast. It's very responsive. It doesn't have the face where I liquefy, but that's okay. I can re reset it. Okay. It goes back really fast as well. Next we have select. We have color range. We have a refined edge, which is fun in case you want to composite some stuff in this. Uh, we have layer, we have new layer and we have new document. We do. So if I actually click on one of these, areas here, like my YouTube cover and create, I can add new documents. I can open a multiple images at the same time. That's pretty cool. So it has a quite a bit, actually. You could probably retouch an entire image with this. Um, but again, as I mentioned, I didn't have a lot of luck opening the full layered TIFF or PSD files because maybe it was too big. Um, maybe you might have a different result than I did. You can rasterize masks. You can um, add a clipping mask, convert to smart objects. That's pretty cool. So I can also um, hover it. No, I can't hover that out. Okay, that's okay. But in terms of filters, we also have noise filters, pixelate, render, clouds, very important filter, in case you want to render some clouds in your background. Okay, so there you have it. So that's a basic look into um, PhotoP. It also has different options here in case you want to learn more about PhotoP. You have a whole tab in order for you to check out more about it. Um, there's a blog, Facebook, and so forth. And you want to 
here we go. So you have a bunch of documentation in case you want to learn more about each individual area, especially basics of masking and working with masking and vector masks and so forth. So good job on making this application for Chrome. I'm excited to see if it starts working a little bit better with full projects. I'll be really curious to try and work it out. But if I already have a computer that I'm working with that has Photoshop on it, I might as well just use it. Um, but if I am probably like on an iPad, I might try and do this on an iPad. That would be kind of interesting to see. So for those of you who have a tablet, I would be curious to see if this actually works and you won't even need a specific um, Photoshop application for an iPad. But again, I'm not too sure if it does. Just throwing out ideas, my mind's starting to go because it's my first time actually getting into it as you've seen together. Also with the tools themselves, they have uh, the selection tools that you are familiar with. We have the selection, the crop, uh, eyedropper tool. We have a spot healing brush. That's interesting. Okay, great. We have the brush tool, clone brush. We have an eraser, gradient, and so forth. What you don't have are actions. You can't actually put actions in there if you wanted to. But aside from that, it seems to have quite a bit. So let me know in the comments if you um, found this interesting, if you actually use it, if you found something else about it that I didn't mention. Um, and again, subscribe to this channel to see more videos. I would love to have you come back again and check out more content that I find. I always love researching and reviewing stuff that I think would be interesting for many people. All right, well, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.